Every day, you and I get bombarded with negative news. And just like our bodies becomes what we eat, our minds become the information that we consume. If you want to stay positive, it's so important that you also listen to stories that inspires you and uplifts you. In this podcast, we interview world-leading experts dedicated to solving the world's most pressing problems. And if you stick around, I promise you will not only be as informed as if you watch the news, you will feel uplifted, inspired, and have more positive energy in your life. Welcome to Great.com Talks with... Hi and welcome. Today, Great.com talks with Kelsey Leash, who is the program director of animalplace.org. And if you haven't heard of them before, they are a California-based animal sanctuary that is focusing on the well-being of farm animals. And if you haven't done so already, you definitely want to press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app, because today we're going to talk about how to make the world better for animals. We're going to talk about the effects of factory farming and what you can do to make a difference. So... Kelsey, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with Great.com today. Of course, I'm happy to be here. So how would you describe uh, Animal Place for someone that is not familiar with your organization? Yeah, Emil, thank you so much for having me on here today. Um, Animal Place um, is a farmed animal sanctuary and we are located in Grass Valley, California in the Sierra foothills um, of California. And we have been in existence for almost 32 years. Um, And we've been rescuing and providing sanctuary to farmed animals and also educating the public about the farmed animal industry. So we have rescued over 32,000 farmed animals over the last 30 years or so. Um, And we currently provide home to nearly 400 animals at our sanctuary. Um, We also are open to the public, of course, not during the pandemic, but typically we have folks come out to the sanctuary and go nose to beak with a chicken or nose to snout with a pig and form that relationship with them. We really want to help educate the public and facilitate change um, so that we can make this world a better place for farmed animals. Mm, I love the, the intention to make the world better for farm animals because I, I see so much suffering happening there. Absolutely. So what do you perceive to be the effect then of people coming to, uh, to the sanctuary and to see these farmed animals? Yeah, there's, we definitely see change um, in people and their actions. Um, A lot of times, people in our society, the only relationship they have with a farmed animal, a pig or a cow, is on their dinner plate. And they don't have the opportunity to meet Cleo the pig or Zeke the chicken um, because that's not typical for, you know, someone they typically grow up with a dog or a cat. So we like to give them that opportunity to meet. Cleo the pig, and um, see that she has emotions just like their dog or cat at home. They can feel sadness, happiness, um, sorrow, excitement. Um, They feel all the same emotions that humans do. Um, So giving them the opportunity to learn that um, and make a connection, um, build a friendship with these animals that really does help with facilitating change. Um, they, we do take surveys after our tours um, and a lot of people say that they're gonna cut animal products out of their diet or they will stop eating the flesh of animals. Um, so I do think it is a powerful tool and, uh, and it is very needed in this world on so many different levels um, to make that change. Yeah, there's a big difference having seen and interacted uh, with an animal compared to picking the same animal up in a supermarket. So I got curious, what does a rescue uh, look like for you guys? 
where do you rescue them from? Uh, how does it work? Yeah, so like I said, we have nearly 400 animals living at our sanctuary permanently and every individual has a name, they have a personality and they also have a background. Um, so they could have come from a cruelty case and were rescued by animal control um, and we were able to take them in. They could have come from the dairy industry, um, the meat industry. So every individual has their own background. But we also, one of Animal Place's really amazing programs, uh, it's near and dear to many of our hearts, is our rescue and adoption program. We rescue three to 4,000 animals a year. Um, they're primarily hens from the egg industry. Uh, and we're able to go in um, and legally liberate with the permission of the farmer thousands of birds a year and then find them homes. Um, so back to your question, what is it like on these rescues or how do we accomplish this? Um, in the egg industry, farmers use the term depopulate, uh, which is their term for killing birds at about a year and a half of age. Um, these chickens can live, you know, up to 10 years of age and they're killed at just a year and a half. They are babies. Um, and that's because their egg production has slowed down and um, they're no longer profitable to the industry. And their solution to that is to just kill them. Uh, and we, we offer an alternative to the farmers um, and offer to go in and take these birds who they would kill and um, take them into our facility, rehabilitate them, and then find them placement in forever homes. Um, and, you know, we're, we've been able to, I gave you that number, 32,000 animals saved and 28,000, I believe, have been hens from the egg industry. It's 28,000 lives that would have been killed. Um, and we were able to provide them a long life. Um, so that's, you know, what a typical rescue looks like. It's, you, we go into these awful conditions where these hens have lived in cages their whole life. They have one square foot of space. They can't spread their wings. They've never felt the sunlight. They've never felt the dirt under their feet. And that's been their existence. They've never been able to be a chicken and we're able to take them out of that horrible, horrible environment and, and let them be chickens for the first time to feel the dirt, to feel the sun on their feathers uh, and then provide them a life after that. Um, so it's pretty uh, moving that experience. Um, and then, you know, we have so many other animals who've been rescued from just as dismal um, existences and provide them sanctuary. Mm. Yeah, the contrast to painting uh, these um, cages compared to the life I assume they have, either at your farm, your sanctuary, or the people that might be adopting those chickens. It, it's really a stark contrast. So what are your hopes for because I can understand that there must be a frustration in that you managed to save 32,000 animals, but I guess that many animals are being slaughtered every day, probably just in the US. So what, what are you trying to do when it comes to affecting people's mindset or policy to help animals? Yeah, that's a really wonderful question. It's a big part of what Animal Place does. Um, I say these numbers and they are uh, astonishing to people um, to hear, you know, 32,000 lives saved, that's huge. But in all honesty and in reality, that is a very, very small number um, in comparison to the animals that are killed daily um, in our world. And in the United States alone, just in the United States, 10 billion land animals are killed every single year um, for human consumption. 10 billion? 
10 billion. And most of those are chickens um, who are killed for their flesh. Um, so those numbers, um, we want to see change. We want to see people make change individually. And then we want to see society make a change. Uh, we don't need to consume animal flesh or animal products. Uh, you can live a healthy and happy life on a plant-based diet. Um, so we do promote that and we educate people on why the effects of animal farming, uh, what it's doing to our environment, our health, um, but most importantly, the animals that it's affecting. So uh, um, when we are open to the public, that's a big part uh, of what we do is educating. People come, uh, they go through our museum of animal farming and they learn the realities of what industrialized animal farming looks like. Um, and then they get to meet the animals and make that connection that I described earlier. Um, so education is huge in what Animal Place does and our mission and helping facilitate that change and in turn helping farmed animals. So my guess is that a lot of people think the way the animals live on Animal Place is the way most chickens live. And the reality is 99.99% of the chickens probably live in the darker yeah. conditions. So how are people reacting then when they get educated about what reality looks like? Sure. If we take it back to just the egg industry, I think that's an easy picture to paint for people because you hear free range or cage free egg farms. And through our uh, rescue program, I personally have been to these cage free or free range organic egg farms. And it's not, it's not a great life. It's not what we see in the commercials. Um, these animals are still killed. They're still killed at a year and a half old. And if you look at um, hens in the egg industry, what happened to the roosters? What happened to the male chicks? 50% uh, of chickens hatched have a chance of being male or female. Um, and a rooster cannot produce eggs. So they're of no use to the egg industry and they are killed right after they're hatched. Um, typically they're either suffocated or I'm, I'm sorry to be graphic, but this is the reality of what we're doing to these animals. They're ground alive. Uh, and so when people say, you know, I'm, I'm just eating an egg, no animal was killed for this egg. That's not true. 50% of those lives were killed immediately after being hatched. And then they're killed, the females, at just a year and a half to two years of age. Um, they're still so young and have so many years left to live. Um, so even on free range egg farms, you're seeing those atrocities for these animals and these individuals. Um, and a cage-free egg farm, that could mean they're still in a dank shed where they don't see light, where they don't have any more space. There's just no caged walls around them. Um, they are still gonna have a square foot of space. The farmers are gonna put as many individuals as they can in that space legally. Um, and it's not a good or happy existence. And we've done a rescue, we rescued 500 hens from an organic egg farm and they were some of the sickest individuals we've ever rescued. They were so sick because they hadn't received vaccines or antibiotics and they were so sick we couldn't even adopt them out. Um, the veterinarians, they all recommended euthanizing all 500 of these birds. They could never be integrated into any other flock because they were so sick. We had a generous donor build a barn for them and a space for them. Um, and for years we've been, our animal caregivers have been putting isolation gear on daily to care for them. Um, so it is, you know, the, the industry gives terms to make people feel better or to think it's okay to eat these animal products. But in reality, the, the animals are suffering just as much, if not worse. 
Right. So from your point of view, then, is there a way to ethically eat animals or um, yeah, is there just no way to uh, consume meat in an ethical way? I 100% can say I do not believe there is a way to ethically consume animals. There's no ethical way to take someone's life. There's no ethical way to kill someone. Um, and that's what's happening. No matter what this animal's life looked like, uh, no matter how much they were loved, if, if you can call it that, um, no one wants to die. No one wants their life taken from them. Um, so there's no, there's no humane way to consume someone's body. So to switch topic a little bit. Sure. Um, what, what does the future look like for the sanctuary? What, what is your vision uh, yeah. for the next you know, five, 10 years? What would you like to become? Yeah. Um, I would like to continue seeing people come out to the sanctuary and meet the animals. Um, I would like to see change within our society as a whole, there are a lot of animal activists and organizations fighting for the rights of farmed animals, um, fighting for change, and um, animal place plays a big role in that, and, and sanctuaries play a big role in that, and in, in providing an opportunity for folks to meet farmed animals. Um, so I would like to see, you know, people come to the sanctuary. I would like to see growth with how many animals we can rescue, um, how many we can provide sanctuary for, how many we can rescue through our rescue and adoption program. Uh, so short answer, I would like to see as many lives saved as possible. And then overall, I would like to see change within our society. Beautiful. And as an individual then listening to this, uh, this episode, what can they do to both create positive action as uh, individuals, but also maybe get involved in uh, a community, be it at Animal Place or any other community? Yeah, um, a really simple way is to make change in your daily lifestyle. Um, and sometimes saying, you know, go vegan, like that's a simple answer, like, but that can feel daunting to people. So maybe it's cut eggs out of your diet. Um, right there, you're helping those hens in the egg industry. You're helping those roosters that are killed immediately. Cut out cow milk, um, replace it with almond milk or soy milk. Uh, there's so many plant-based options and they're really good. We're lucky to live in a time right now where there are so many options. Um, and then eventually work your way to going vegan. You, you can really make, each individual can make a difference by doing that. Um, also, you know, volunteer at your local farmed animal sanctuaries, sanctuaries.org. Um, people can go there and find a sanctuary that's close to them. Volunteer, donate. If you're able to donate to Animal Place or any other sanctuary, that really does make a difference. That makes a direct difference in saving lives. Um, so volunteer, donate go vegan, um, take small steps like cutting egg out of your diet. They really do have an impact. Mm, yes, Kelsey Leach, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to speaking with Great.com today about uh, animal welfare. Absolutely, thank you, Emil. Thank you. And uh, for you listening, if you enjoyed this, press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app, because that will show your podcast service that this is an important interview. And that means more people can hear about how we can make the world better for animals. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll see you in the next episode.